In the second part of Lecture 2, we're going to learn about Fortran and we're going to get to see its evolution into a modern language. Originally, all programming was done in the native language of the computer. In other words, using the binary codes that comprised their instructions. This was difficult to do because it was difficult to envision any larger portion of the program than the instruction that you were currently writing. One of the first things that programmers did to make it easier was to represent the binary numbers in base 8. Base 8, or octal numbers, can be converted to and from binary or base 2 numbers more quickly than converting binary to or from base 10, or the decimal numbers that we use. Later, programmers developed symbolic names for the operation codes, or opcodes and the operands of the instructions. This made it easier to write the programs. After they checked to make sure that the program would work correctly, they would simply hand translate it to machine language and then it could be entered into the computer. Eventually, programmers discovered that the task was so mechanical that it could be automated fairly easily. That meant that they could write programs that would do the translation for them. Since these programs assembled the translations, they were called assemblers, and the languages became known as assembly languages. As we discussed earlier, many of the earliest computers were used for large-scale numerical applications. So for this reason, it makes perfect sense that there were so many attempts to create a high-level programming language for numerical applications. Speed code, A0, and speed coding were all attempts to do exactly this. But they were slow to translate and slow to execute. And it took a while before there were computers that had the necessary hardware to support floating point arithmetic. Before, that all had to be done by software emulation. For these reasons, it took a while for such efforts to become successful. Bacchus and his group at IBM worked on Fortran from 1955 to 1957. The language was based partially on the IBM 704 computer, which remained for a long time the standard for what Fortran did. It included real numbers and integers, as well as several control statements, conditional and unconditional go-tos, and counting loops using the do statement. It also included formatted and unformatted input and output that included the use of files. Fortran was popular enough that there have been several versions since then. Fortran 2 added subroutine and function calls and common blocks of data that could be shared by the program and subprograms. Fortran 3 introduced a few machine-specific features and was never publicly released. Fortran 4 removed a few hardware-specific features and added Boolean variables and expressions, explicit variable declarations, and replace the arithmetic if statement with a conditional if statement. Newer versions in both 1977 and 1990 added additional features, including more structured control statements and a character-based data type. Fortran is a line-oriented language. Generally, the rule is one statement per line and one line per statement. This goes back to its origins, when Fortran programs were recorded on punch cards and then read in using a card reader and position on the line is also important. Statements are generally written in columns 7 through 72. If the letter C appears in column 1, then that line is a comment and is not translated by the compiler. Statement numbers appear in columns 1 through 5. The only statements that need statement numbers are those being explicitly referenced, such as using the statement as a destination for a go-to, as the end of a do loop, or as a format statement. The number of the last statement included in the do loop on this slide is 102. If you needed to continue a statement on the next line, you simply place the character in column 6. It could be any character, although most programmers develop their own styles for this. Fortran 1 and 2 did not have explicit type declarations. Variables beginning with i, j, k, l, m, and n were integers. Variables beginning with other letters were real numbers. If you wanted to work with an array, 
you declared it as such using a dimension statement. If you wanted to have variables beginning with a particular letter have a different data type than you would have implicitly. You can use an implicit statement to change it, as you see here. In this program, variables beginning with A, C, R, and S are also integers, although normally they would be real. Variable assignments work in the same way as they do in other languages. Input is performed using a read statement. The first of two numbers in parentheses indicate the device code for the input statement. By convention, 5 is usually the card reader, 6 the printer, and 7 the card punch. Other numbers can be used for files after they are open and the device codes assigned. The second parenthetic number is the statement number for the format statement being used. I3 means the next three columns on the card, or in this case, the first three, are an integer value. Fortran 1 and 2 only had the arithmetic if. In this case, if listlen is negative, the program jumps to statement 106 because the first statement number after the parentheses is 106. If listlen is 0, it jumps to statement 106 because the second number after the parentheses is 106. And if it's positive, it jumps to statement 101 because this is the third statement number after the parentheses. In the second if statement, it goes to 101 if listlen minus 100 is negative because this indicates that the value is within the allowable range. The continue statement is the no op or no operation. It allows the programmer to attach a statement number to a card that can easily be rearranged in the deck if necessary when debugging a program. The do statement is for counting loops. Counter is initially 1, and its highest legal value is listlen. Since there is no third value listed, the increment value is the default value of 1. The only new feature in this portion of the program is the write statement and its format statement. The format statement contains two fields. The first, beginning with 33H, is called a hollerith field, meaning that the 33 character starting immediately after the H is a quote. This is used because early key punches didn't have quotation marks. The first character in an input was used for printer control. Beginning this line with a blank moved the printer to the beginning of the next line. The return statement indicates the logical end of the main program, and the end statement marks the physical end of the main program. This program written in Fortran 4 illustrates some of the changes in the language that appeared when Fortran 4 came out in 1962. These were followed by the first industry standardization of Fortran in 1966. There were now explicit variable declarations and additional data types. You now had integer, real, double precision, complex, and logical. And you could use these statements for declaring arrays as well as scalar variables. There was now unformatted input and output that didn't involve files. The asterisks that you see here indicate that the device is the standard input device, whatever that may be. And there is no format statement for output. The logical if statement now appears to avoid overloading the equal sign, that is, giving it too many different meanings, and to avoid using the less than and greater than signs, which were not always on keyboards, they use two-letter abbreviations with periods on either side as a relational operator. And an or, true and false, could be used also, also with periods on either side. You could use the if statement to jump conditionally to another statement, or to perform some operation conditionally. Since there was no structure for if-then-else, this was implemented by using conditional and unconditional go-tos, just as we still do in assembly language. Here you see the use of unformatted output. In this case, we still use a device code of 6 for the printer, because we want to state the device explicitly, even though we are not using a format statement. Fortran 77 saw additional changes. 
the most significant changes involve the use of block structure for if then and if then else. Some compilers included a while statement that did not actually become part of the standard until Fortran 90. Another change was that you didn't need the parentheses for input and output to standard input and output devices. You could write the format statement number and a comma, or just an asterisk and a comma for input. You also see the start of the if-then-else construct. The word then appears at the end of an if statement. Every statement until the else or end if statement is performed only if the condition is true. Output to a standard output device was a little different. The word print was used instead of write. After this, you simply write the statement number or an asterisk and then a comma. You can also see the end of the if-then-else here. In this case, there's only one statement performed if the condition is false. And then the end if is followed by the end statement, marking the physical as well as logical end of the program. Fortran 95 saw additional changes that include the use of inline comments, beginning with an exclamation point. Implicit none does not allow for implicit typing which came to be considered poor style. You can see here the introduction of the end do, which is more readable than ending do loops with a statement number that had appeared in the do statement. Here you can see the end of the program. Overall, it's clear that Fortran has evolved significantly from 1957 to 1995, and it continues to evolve.